Good morning, viewers. This video is meant for uh, students at the university, at the previous universities. We want to look at how to find the inverse of a square matrix. Now, first of all, a matrix is a rectangular array of numbers. A square matrix, a square matrix that is n by n matrix, n by n matrix is said to be invertible. singular or non-degenerate if there is if there is another n by n matrix that is another square matrix B such that AB is equal to I, where I is the identity matrix. We say that B is unique. B is unique. And B, the matrix B, is the inverse. Of A, which is denoted as A inverse. That is to say, when you have any square matrix, that is n by n matrix, A A A inverse, A times A inverse will be equal to the identity matrix. That is, any square matrix times its inverse should give you the identity matrix. Now, how do you find it, the inverse of a matrix? Before you find the inverse of a matrix, you have to first of all check whether its determinant exists or not. If the determinant of a matrix is zero, then the inverse of that matrix does not exist. When it does not exist, then you say that the matrix is not invertible, or the matrix is singular, or the matrix is degenerate. Now, on the other hand, if the inverse, if the determinant is not equal to zero, then it means that the inverse exists. And you say that the matrix is invertible, it is non singular or non degenerate. Now, how do you find the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix? For example, when you have a 2 by 2 matrix like this, A, B, C, D, how do you find the inverse? The inverse of any square matrix, A, if you have a matrix A, the inverse, A inverse, is given by 1 over the determinant times the adjoint of the matrix we are talking about. Now, for a 2 by 2 matrix, the determinant, which is also written as this, is given by AD minus BC. That is A, A times D minus BC, B times C. So this times this minus this times that. And then the adjoint, the adjoint of A is equal to the adjoint, what you do is that you just interchange the positions of A and D. So D will come here, A will come here, and then negate B and negate C. So for example, if you have a matrix A, which is equal to 4, negative 5, negative 3, 4. When you are given a, a matrix like this, and you are asked to find the inverse, then the inverse to find the inverse, you have to first of all find the determinant. If the determinant is zero, then you don't go ahead to find the inverse. It means that the inverse does not exist. 
So the determinant of this one, which is the same as that of A, is equal to 4 times 4 minus negative 3 times negative 5. This is 16 minus negative times negative is positive, so 15. So you are going to have 16 minus 16, which is equal to 1. So the determinant is 1. Now the adjoint, adjoint of A is equal to, we just interchange the positions of 4 and 4. So because we have the same number there, then this one will be 4, 4, and then we negate the negative 5 to get 5, negate negative 3 to get 3. That is Therefore, the inverse of A, A inverse, is equal to 1 over the determinant times the adjoint of A. One over, one over the determinant times adjoint of A. So this is equal to, because the, the determinant is 1, it should be 1 over 1 times the adjoint is 4, 5, 3, 4. And this is equal to 4, 5, 3, 4. So this is how to find the, the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. Now, let's... This is how to find the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. This is so simple. Now let's look at the inverse of a 3 by 3 matrix. If you have a 3 by 3 matrix, a square matrix, which is 3 by 3, that is a square matrix with 3 rows and 3 columns, how will you find the inverse? For example, let me pick any matrix at all, maybe matrix B, which is equal to, and I'm writing matrix at the 1, 0, 2, 2, negative 1, 3, 4, 1, 8. Let's assume that I have been asked to find the inverse of this matrix. So the first thing to do is to find the determinant. Because if the determinant is zero, you don't have to go ahead to find the inverse. So let's find the determinant. Determinant of B, which is the same as that of B, is equal to, what you do is that, you can use any row or column. So let's use the first row. You are using the first row. Now if you use the first row, you are using the elements in the first row. So when you pick one, you have one like this. When you pick one, then you cross out all the elements in that row, you cover all the elements in that row and all the elements in that column because one can be found in the first row and the first column. That's why one is A11. Okay, so when you cross out, you left it. And I have written the one here. When you cross out, it's like this. You cover here, then you cover here. So we left to do one, negative one, three, one, eight. And then zero. Now, when you have any matrix like this, every matrix, square matrix has got, has got what you call alternating signs. These are alternating signs for a three by three matrix. Last minus last minus plus minus plus minus plus now how do you obtain these uh, alternating signs now like i've already said this one is a11 the matrix i've written can also be written this way these are their positions a11 a12 a13 a21 a22 a23 a24 a32, A33. So for the first one, you can see that the first one corresponds to A11 because it is in the first row and the first column. The alternating sign is positive because you use this negative 1 all raised to the power i plus g. So if you have A11, it means that i is 1 and j is 1. So for the first one, A11 will have negative 1 raised to the power because it's in the first row i will be 1 in the fir first column i will be j will be 1 so we are going to have something like negative 1 or raised to the power 2 and this one will give us 1 
Because one is positive, this one has a rotating sign of positive glass. Now, let me use the next one. The next one is A12. A12. A12 have negative one raised to the power. This one is in the first row and then the second column. So the, the I is 1 and the G is 2. So this one will be negative 1 raised to the power 3. And this one is negative 1. And because this answer is negative, the alternating sign for this, the zero, is negative. So this can be extended for all matrices, matrices all square matrices. Okay. I have understood this. Let me clean it and then continue. So the alternating sign for this one is negative. So it will be negative 0. So whatever element here. And then if you pick the 0, you cross out all the elements in this row, which, is, which are 1, 0, 2, and all the elements here. So when you cross out, like I'm doing, then you'll be left with 2, 3, 4, 8. Then the next one, the alternating sign for the next one is plus, as I indicated. Plus, minus, plus, negative plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. So the alternating sign for this one is positive, so plus 2. And then again, 2 is in the first row, third column. So you cross out all the elements here in the first row, like this, and all the elements in the third column. So when you do that, you will left with this matrix. 2, negative 1, 4, 1. This is equal to 1, and then we are finding the, the, the determinant of this matrix. As I have already explained to you, the 2 by 2 matrix. So this is 8 times negative 1, which is negative 8, minus 3. Because A times D minus BC. So A times negative 1 is negative 8, minus 1 times 3. So this will be negative 11. Because this is 0, everything here will be 0. So you don't have to look at it. Last, because the coefficient is 0, everything here will be 0. Or, if you want to still look at it, you can have 0 times 2 times 8 is 16, minus 4 times 3 is 12. So, 16 minus 12 is 4. Plus 2, 2 times 1 is 2. Minus, that is AD minus BC, so the minus in the formula. 2 minus 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. So 2 minus minus 4. So that one will be plus 4. Like right this. So this is equal to negative 11. This is 0 plus 2 plus 4 is 6 times 2. That is 12. So this is 1. So the determinant of this matrix is 1. Okay. On the other hand, if somebody had decided to use the first column to find the determinant, would the person would the person get the same answer as this one? So let's demonstrate that one. So or if you want to find a determinant, let's assume that a student B wants to find a determinant, but he or she doesn't want to use the first row. He wants to use the, 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 the first column. So the determinant of B, which is that of B, will be to pick one. And still one has a positive alternating sign. So that's why one is positive here. And then when you pick one, then as usual, you cross out the first row, or the elements in the first row, and the elements in the first column. When you do that, you'll be left with this matrix. Negative 1, 3, 1, 8. Now, the next one is 2. The alternating sign for 2, as clearly written here, is negative 1. So you are going to have negative 2, and then you cross out all the elements in that row. So you cross out the elements here, 2, negative 1, 3, and they cross out the elements here. So you'll be left with 0, 2, 1, 8. 0, 2, 1, 8. And then the last one is 3. The last one is 4. 
the alternating sign for for four is positive. So plus four. And then cross out all the elements in the third row and then the first column. When you do that, you will have to zero two negative one three. Zero two negative one three. Now let's check. This is one. Negative one times eight is negative eight minus three. One times three is three. So you subtract it. Negative eleven. Negative two. Zero times this is zero. Zero times eight is zero. Minus two. That is one times two is two. So zero minus two. That is uh, negative two. Plus four. Zero times three is zero. Minus minus negative one times two is negative two. So this one will be positive two. That is zero minus minus two. So we have something like this, negative eleven. Negative times negative is positive plus four. This time this is eight. So we have negative eleven plus twelve. That is one. So this clearly indicates that if you choose any row or column, we are going to get the same determinant. Now, there is another way of finding the determinant. In that way, you use what you call, in that method, you use what you call the Sarusus method. And I want to quickly uh, demonstrate that. In Sarusus method, let me clean what I have. What do I do? I think, yeah? In Sarusus method, what you do is that, what you do is that, this is the given matrix. 1, 0, 2. 2, negative 1, 3. 4, 1, 8. What you do is that you just replicate the first uh, column. You will just repeat the, the elements in the first column. 1, 2, 4. The second column. 0, negative 1, 1. This is the Sarusus method for determining. So we have it this way. So you see, I've just repeated the elements in the first column and the elements in the second column. When you do this, then you do something like this. Then you use a different marker. You draw an arrow to pass through these elements. And then draw another arrow to pass through these elements. And then this way. Now, when you finish, you are going to multiply 1. You are going to find the product of 1, negative 1, and 8. And write the answer here. So this one will give you negative 8. And then 0 times 3 times 4 is 0. 3 times 2 times 1. Is four. We have it here, and then you go the other way. The other way. Let me use a different uh, marker. Okay, let me use the red, the blue marker. You go this way. You go that way, and then you go this way. Yet you are going to find the the the, 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 the products. So the first one. The first that we are going to find 4 times negative 1 times 2. This one will give us negative 8. Let me use the black marker. Negative 8. And then the next one, 1 times 3 times 1. That is 3. 8 times 2 times 0. That is 0. Now, to find the... the, the to find the determinant, determinant of the matrix B is therefore giving us, you just add the numbers here. The numbers we had here, negative 8 plus 0 plus 4, and then you subtract the numbers at the top, the sum of the numbers at the top. That will be this way. Now, negative 8 plus 0 plus 4 is negative 4 minus negative 8 plus 3 is negative 5 here so we are going to have negative 4 minus minus 
So plus five. And this is equal to one. So this one has also given us the same determinant. So it means that the determinant is one. So in examination in, or anywhere you want to find the determinant, you can use any of these uh, methods. Now, having established that the determinant is one, let's move ahead to find the inverse. Because the determinant is not zero. And when the determinant is not zero, it means that the inverse exists. So let's move ahead to find the inverse. Now, to find the inverse, you find what you call, to find the inverse, you find what you call cofactor, matrix of cofactors, matrix of cofactors. So let me call that matrix, okay, matrix of cofactors, this is equal to, it's a very big matrix. Now, this is what we are going to do. We know the alternating signs to be plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, plus is this. Now, for the first one, the first element, we, we are not going to look at the element there. We are only interested in the position. So this is the first element. And the alternating sign is positive. So the first element is plus this. Now, what we do is that we cross out all the elements in the first row, because the first element one is in the first row, first column, like we did when we were finding the determinants. So we do this, do this, we cross out this, cross out this. So we're going to get to negative one, three, one, eight. Now, the next element is zero. Don't look at the, the element there. We're only interested in this position. The alternating sign corresponding to zero is negative one, as clearly indicated here. So this one will be negative, then you do this. Because zero is in the first row, second column, you cross out all the elements here, all the elements here. So we left with two, three, four, eight. Two, three, four, eight. Then the last one is two. The alternating sign is positive. So plus you cross out all the elements here, all the elements here. We left with two negative one. Two negative one. All the elements here, all the elements here, 2, negative 1, 4, 1. Like this. That's for the first row. Now the second row, you do the same thing. The alternative sign for the first one is negative. You cross out all the elements in the first row. Second, uh, no, the, the, the first column, second row. So you do this, do this. So you will have to 0, 2, 1, 8. 0, 2, 1, 8. The next one. Is negative one, and negative one. The alternating sign is positive, so don't look at the the sign here. We are not interested in the number here. We are only interested in the position. That's why I've ignored the negative here, because the alternating sign corresponding to this one is positive. Now, we cross out all the elements here. All the elements here. We left it one, two, four, eight. One, two, four, eight. And then the last one. The, 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 the third one, the alternative sign is negative. So you cross out all the elements in this column, all the elements in this row. So we left it 1041. 1041. Now let's move on to the third row. We have 4. The alternative sign is positive. So plus. You cross out all the elements here, all the elements here. We have 0, 2, negative 1, 3. You have to be very careful when you are writing the numbers. Then the next one, the alternating sign is negative. You cross out all the elements here, all the elements here. 1, 2, 2, 3. 1, 2, 2, 3. And then the last one, the alternating sign is positive. So plus, you cross out all the elements here, all the elements here. So you have 1, 0, 2, negative 1. 1, 0, 2, negative 1. 1, 0, 2, negative 1, like this. Now, when you solve this one, you are going to get something like this. So the matrix of cofactors will now be, so matrix of cofactors, matrix of cofactors is 
now equal to you find the determinant here a times negative one that is negative eight minus three remember how you found the, the determinant of a two by two matrix so this one will be negative eleven negative eight minus three negative eleven the next one a times two is sixteen minus four times three and that will be sixteen minus twelve that is four but because this is negative that is negative four that is sixteen minus twelve four minus two. then the next one two times one is two minus minus four times negative one so that will be six that is two minus minus four six so this is six the next one a times zero is zero minus one times two so that would be negative two zero minus two negative two and because here is negative this one will be positive two a times one is eight minus eight that is zero the next one one times one is one minus zero that is one one minus zero is one because here is negative this one will be negative one the next one zero times three a zero minus minus two that will be positive two and then one times three is three minus four will be negative one that is three minus four will be negative one and because here is negative it will be positive one and then the last one negative one times one is negative one minus two times zero so negative one minus zero that is negative one so we have this now so this is the matrix of cofactors now what you do then is to find the adjoint to find the adjoint all that you do is to transpose this matrix the matrix of cofactors so the transpose of the matrix of cofactors will give you the adjoint or what you sometimes call the adjugate so adjoint adjoint of the matrix B is equal to we just transpose this one now to transpose what you do is that you pick a row like this you have negative 11 negative 4 6 you pick it this way and place it this way so you do it this way you pick the elements this way and place it this way so this one will be negative 11 this is the simplest way to transpose a matrix now pick this one 2 0 negative 1 you pick it and place it this way you pick it this way and place it this way then the last one will be 2 1 negative 1 so this is the adjoint of B uh, this is the adjoint of B the adjoint of B now having obtained the adjoint then you move ahead to find the inverse therefore B inverse the inverse of the matrix we are given is now equal to 1 over the determinant of B times the adjoint of B and this is equal to and uh, the determinant of 1 you find the determinant to be 1 in all the, the methods we use right? it's going to be one. so 1 over 1 times the adjoint negative 11 2 2 negative 4 0 1 6 negative 1 negative 1 and this is equal to because this is 1 we are going to get the same thing 2 2 negative 4 0 1 6 negative 1 negative 1 so basically this is how the, the inverse of a square matrix uh, is obtained you find the, the determinant you find the adjoint and then you see one over the determinant that's adjoint and i've already said that if the determinant is zero then the inverse does not exist and such a matrix is referred to as a singular matrix or degenerate matrix so when you ask to find the inverse of any matrix the first thing you have to do is to find the determinant if the determinant is zero you don't move ahead to even find the inverse if the determinant is not zero, then it means that you have every license to move ahead to find the inverse. Now, the method we have just discussed is the analytic solution method. 
But there are other several methods they can be used to find the, the inverse of a square matrix. So we have talked about the analytic solution method. This is the, the, the method you have just used. Yes, the analytic solution method. Now you have other methods. You have Gaussian elim elimination method. Gaussian elimination method. Gaussian elimination method. We have Newton's method. Newton's method. Newton's method. We have Kali. Hamilton method. We have hygiene decomposition method. These are all methods you can use to find the inverse of a square matrix. Hygiene decomposition method. We also have Cholosky. Decomposition method. The last thing is the composition method. And then you also have what you call seven block inverse. Sorry, blockwise inversion method. So these are other methods that can be used to find the inverse of a given matrix. So you have to use the one that uh, you, are, you are convenient with. So maybe in the later, the subsequent uh, videos, you try to use the other methods to, to, to find the inverses of square matrices so that those who are not abreast with those methods will be abreast with them. Now to see for more of these uh, of this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel so that anytime uh, I, I put something there, you can also download. Thank you very much for your uh, attention.